that caught me by surprise. <laughs> I'm Emma from M English, and in today's lesson, we're going to go over five expressions using catch. It's going to be short and sweet, this lesson. We'll just focus on words that are often used with catch in English. We call these common collocations, words that are often used together in English sentences. And learning which English words are often used together will help you to sound more natural when you speak English yourself. Oh, and later in the lesson, I've got a quick homework task for you and a book that I want to recommend for you. It's one that I'm sure you'll adore. So stay tuned. Before we get started, a quick reminder to turn on the subtitles if you need to. This lesson is quick and really helpful for others learning English in your country too. So if you have time to translate this lesson so that other people can learn from it too, then that would be amazing. Not to mention it would be excellent English practice for you as well. The link to translate this video is in the description below and your name will appear below this lesson as a contributor to the video. Okay, so you've probably heard of this verb catch, right? But did you know that you can catch a cold? That you can catch on fire? Or catch a whiff of something? If you catch a cold, it means you're sick. You can catch the flu, you can catch a virus or any type of airborne sickness. It's something that you can catch. <clears throat> My throat is kind of starting to hurt. I think I've caught a cold. You can also catch what someone said or not catch it if you didn't quite hear them. Did you catch what he just said? Mmm, I just caught a whiff of something delicious. Can you smell it? If you catch a whiff of something, it means that you can smell something. Now it could be something good like a freshly baked cake or loaf of bread but it could also be something bad. <sighs> when we walked past his room, I caught a whiff of his dirty gym clothes. Oof. Now, if something catches your eye, then it attracts your attention. You're curious and you're interested. It's something that you desire or you want. A cute little cafe on the corner caught my eye when I was walking by. I'd like to go there for lunch one day. I think the guy who made your coffee this morning caught your eye. Now, notice that this expression is used, often used with past or perfect tenses because usually it's unexpected, it's a surprise. So often you're reporting about something after it happens. Now, there's a really subtle difference between catching someone's eye and catching someone's attention. Hey. Hey, are you still listening? <laughs> I'm trying to catch your attention. I'm doing something to try and make you look and watch me. I'm trying to catch your attention. I'm trying to keep you interested in this lesson. And it's a deliberate action. I'm trying to catch your attention. We created the advertisement to be really catchy. We wanted to catch the attention of shoppers as they walk past. We use catch to say goodbye informally. Catch you later, catch you soon, or catch you in a few minutes. And these are all ways of saying, see you soon, see you again soon. I'm running late for my appointment, but I'll catch you soon. Catch you later. But don't go anywhere just yet. I've still got your homework to go through, plus I'm introducing a new segment to my lessons where I make a recommendation about a book that I've been reading or a podcast that I've been listening to, which I really want to recommend to you because I think you'll enjoy it. The one that I want to start with is this book, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. Now, I read this book years ago, but I was recently reminded of it again when I found it on Audible and I listened to it. It's told from the perspective of a 15 year old boy who has autism and he's investigating the murder of his neighbor's dog. Now, it doesn't dwell on the fact that this boy, his name's Christopher, that he has autism, 
but it allows us to view the world from a completely different perspective, his perspective, which is fascinating. Christopher takes us on an investigation with him and it leads to more incidents that need to be investigated, so it's quite gripping. Now the book's not too long and the vocabulary is not overly complex, which means it's a really great book for you to read. It uses everyday common English. Now, I've added a link to the book in the description below, but I've also added a link to Audible where you can download the audiobook and listen while you read. You guys know that I always recommend that you read books to expand your vocabulary, but listening while you read allows you to work on some of the other skills, English skills at the same time. So you're listening, obviously, but it also helps to improve your pronunciation as well. Reading and listening to books are an awesome way to practice English collocations because you experience English as it's used in context. And this is going to help you to use English more naturally yourself, just as native English speakers do. So if you do read it or you have read it before, then let me know what you think about the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime in the comments below. Now, your homework for today's lesson is to write a sentence using each of the five expressions that you learned today, those expressions with catch. Write them in the comments so that I can check them and make sure that you're using them correctly. Hit that subscribe button just down there if you enjoyed this lesson, and even better, share it with a friend who could use it as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.